Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. A few weeks ago, I did a video where I compared four 1.1 stub nibs, and I really enjoyed doing that. So I thought to myself, go on Gary, why not do the same with some broad nibs? Then I got all my broad nibbed pens together and thought, oh dear, that's a lot. So what I'm going to do is I thought, well, I'm going to split this up over a number of weeks. This week, I'm going to take a look at three broad nipped pens from Germany. Next week, I'll be looking at three pens from Taiwan. The week after that, it will only be two from Japan because I've only got two Japanese pens with a broad nib. Then roughly two weeks after that, I'm going to do a final video where I'm going to take the winner of the previous three and then compare them against each other to come up with my ultimate broad nibbed pen. So join me now down on the mat. Let's jump in and take a look at the German pens. Here we are down on the mat. I've already brought in my notebook of testing. This is Oxford Optic Paper. It's a B5 notebook. In this video, I'm not reviewing the pens. Obviously, we'll be taking a look at them and comparing them against each other. But this isn't really looking at being a pen review. It's more looking at how the nibs are comparing against each other. So the first pen, this is by Kaveco. And it's the Kaveco Sport. Nice light pen. The second pen is a Lamy Safari. And then my third pen is a Diplomat Aero. Three very different pens. And to be honest, they each meet three very different needs. We'll start with the Kaveco Sport. Remember, we're only really looking at the nib. So on here, we've got a fairly small looking nib. Next, we'll have the Lamy, if I can get it to sit still. There we go, there's the Lamy. Then the final pen, that's the Diplomat Aero. So we can see a lot of difference already in the nibs. We've got that very small nib here on the Kaveco. Remember, it doesn't matter that it's small. What matters is how it writes. That's what we're going to take a look at in a second. In the middle, here we've got the Lamy Safari. I like here with the nib that it's black, so it matches in with this charcoal color of the actual pen. And then we've got this gorgeous Diplomat nib here. Number six size one. It's not a nib I'm ever planning to change out because again, like the other two, to be honest, the nib's not too bad. So I'll pop these away and we'll do some writing. So the first pen we're going to write with is a Kaveco Sport. This is nice. Remember, because it's a Sport, it's a very small pen. It's a pocket pen. So you do need to use it posted. Posted is nice and comfortable. As we've already said, it's a broad nib. This cost 35 Australian dollars. The ink by Colt Pens. And it's called Deep Dark Green. This is a nice ink. It looks really nice in this pen. Let me just fetch them up to each other. I think the shades really complement each other. The ink in this pen, it lasts and lasts and lasts. It's actually in a cartridge. Now, this is a Kaveco cartridge, but it had blue ink. I did not like the Kaveco blue ink. So I've cleaned it out and I filled that with the deep dark green. This is a pocket pen and it does go with me virtually everywhere. I've got this and I've got a small Fabriano notebook. So this one is empty at the moment. I've got my test page there. I've got seven notebooks. At the moment, the notepad I'm using, it's in the other room because that and this pen, they both go in my cargo pants pocket and they go with me every time I leave the house. So I've always got something to write down a quick note with. Let's look at drying times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 
still fairly wet, one minute. After a minute, still smudge it ever so slightly. I'm not going to do a two minute test though. What I'm going to do is move the mic down to the paper so you can hear the pen write. Let's look for line variation. So no pressure, with some pressure. Then flow. This is a really nice pen to use. It's got a lovely amount of feedback. I don't know if that came over the mic when I was writing. We've got a nice audible feedback, but it feels nice on the page. It's not catching, it's not dragging, but it's just got that really nice tactileness to it. Really enjoy using that. So that's the Claveco Sport. The second pen we're going to take a look at, the Lamy Safari. So we're going to do some writing with this one. So we've got here a Lamy. Safari. It's also a broad nib and it was 37 Aussie dollars. The ink is by Diamine and it's Beethoven. Now I know in an ideal world I would be using the same ink in all the pens but I use these pens day to day, so I've got in them inks that I want to try, inks that I enjoy using. The one thing I can say at the moment, the line on this Safari looks a lot wider than what we see with the Sport. Drying times, so we go immediate, looks a lot wetter. 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. After a minute, again, got a little bit of a smudge, but I'm not going to do a two minute test. We'll move the mic down to the paper and we'll do some writing. Now let's do some line variation. So no pressure, added pressure, and some S's. I don't actually see much difference in terms of line variation. Maybe slightly narrower on my upline, but not that much. And flow. With this ink, I'm actually quite enjoying the pen. The problem with this pen though, is it is very different behavior depending on ink. Some inks, it's just so dry, it's so unpleasant. You've got to be very, very careful. Although I'm not going to do a comparison of weights, the weight between the Kaveco and the Safari seems very similar. I like that we're seeing this wider line. I do enjoy that. As I say though, with other inks, the line is more heading towards medium. So it's not consistent. But anyway, that's the Lamy Safari. Let me move the paper up. And now we're going to do the last pen. So the last pen is this gorgeous Diplomat Aero. So here we go, Diplomat. Aero. Again, it's a broad nib. Cost-wise, this is a big jump in price. 263 Aussie dollars. So that's what, maybe six or seven of 
the previous two pens. A lot of money for a pen when you look at it against the Safari and that Kaveco Sport. Big difference between the three. This one's metal. These other two, they're plastic. So you're talking a lot more money for your material anyway. The ink is by Dominant Industry. And it's called Lake. Absolutely love this ink color, really nice. It's the first time I've had it in a pen proper. Before this, I'd only been using it in a dip pen. Really enjoying the look of the color, the way it performs. Drying times, so we've got immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. One minute. And after a minute, that one's nice and dry. I'll move the mic, do some writing. That's ever so nice to write with. Mind variation, no pressure. With pressure. And then. So we are seeing a little bit of line variation there. We've definitely got that narrower line when I'm going up. More so than what I was seeing when I was doing it with the Safari. And flow. That's nice, keeps it really well. I love this Diplomat Aero. It's a hefty pen. It's about, I think it's about 30 grams. I say we're not comparing the actual pens, we're looking more at the nibs, but you know, the weight of the pen does help. Got this nice clip. I like the gunmetal look there, and that does really well with this factory material, which is essentially the raw aluminium. Ever so nice pen to use, but that's the Diplomat Aero. Trying to move the page, so hopefully we'll have a bit of the writing of all of them on. Uh, hopefully we should have the names as well. Just move this down a little bit. There we go. So the pens we've looked at is the Kaveco Sport, the Lamy Safari, and the Diplomat Aero. Try and get that Aero in there as well. When I look at the lines that we're getting from it, the Kaveco Sport is definitely a finer line. I don't want to say it's a medium. It's definitely wider than a medium to my eye. But I see real nice wide lines coming from both the Safari and the Aero. Looking at the use case though, this is a pocket pen. It's designed to be in my pocket with a little notebook. It's there for writing little quick notes. This pen is perfect. There's next to no weight to it. It's really light. I hardly know it's in my pocket, so I can have other things in my pocket as well, but I can very quickly get to it because it's got a nice size to it. Nice pen to use. When I look at the Safari, to be honest, the use case for this for me now, I use it for comparing with other pens as a size comparison. I just don't get on with this pen, and I'm not sure why, because I've got an AL Star, which is the exact same body, but made out of aluminium. Weight-wise, it's very, very similar. This has got a 1.5 stub on it. But I absolutely love using that. Whereas I really struggle with this. I just, I don't know what it is. I just cannot find myself liking the Safari. With the Aero, this is so much nicer. But look at the price, $263, as opposed to $37 and $35. You would expect it to be nicer, wouldn't you, for that much more. When it writes, I know I didn't comment about that because I thought I'd talk about it in here. It's very smooth with a perceptible feedback. Really nice, very tactile. I'm just going to move this up so we can actually see more of the writing. We get some nice shading 
Yes, I know again, not necessarily the nib, it could also be related to the ink. And ideally, I would use the same ink, but then in my day to day work, I'd find that boring. The use case for this, well, it sits in my Galen leather case, or it sits in my case that's on the side where I keep my inked up pens. I use it for note taking, I use it for jotting ideas. I use it for practicing my handwriting. I use it regular. I would say there's certainly, I'm not going to say I use it every day, but definitely every week I'm using this pen. It's nice. It's a pen that I'm quite happy to reach for because it's enjoyable to use. So looking at the winner, which pen is going to go forward? Definitely not the Lamy Safari. I, I say it writes nice with the sink, just not consistent. I think the Caveco Sport a little bit on the narrow side for me. I'd like to see it wider. So I'm going to give the winner to the Diplomat Aero. And this pen, that's going to go forward about three or four weeks time into the final where we'll look at it against some pens from Taiwan and a pen from Japan. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What German pens have you got that aren't within this collection of these manufacturers? I'd love to know if there's some other broad nipped pens that you'd like me to look at. Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.